actually the book takes you through exactly what all the steps, how to how, what the subconscious is, and then also how to do your own self hypnosis. So it's all you can do it all on your own. And interestingly, someone just told me she's doing the book and she's single, but she's also finding some other things about her career that's been blocking her. So it really there's a lot of great exercise. It, it's all the same stuff at the core, whether it's money or love. It's the stuff that's blocking you in your life. So even if you're not single, you should get the book <laughs> <laughs> because it can help you in other areas. Yes? What is it that you found inside yourself that allows you to let love in? To allow me to what? Let love in. Well, he asked what in me has allowed let love, to me to let love in. Is that correct? In myself? Um, I guess it would be my connection to my spirit. And I see myself for who I really am. Not the Debbie. Like I'm this other being that's just much more powerful than my skin. And... That part of me loves me so unconditionally that it just reflects wherever I go, and he's just a reflection of that. So love isn't outside of you. No one can pour love into you, like coffee. <laughs> it's like, it, it comes from you, you're triggered with it. So it's all that love and all those emotions come from inside of you. So, and then you take them with you. The lie is like, when you break up with someone, they take your, their love away. It's like, no, they just triggered your abandonment issues from, you know, when you were younger. So all, everything emotion, everything you experience has something to do with you. And no one does anything to you, you just get triggered by them. And actually a lot of it is good for you. Because if we didn't have those triggers, we wouldn't really, really have the deep. If I didn't have the struggle I had, I don't think I could have the love I had. Now I could have lived a surface life and got married and lived in the burbs and just hung out and had babies and never really loved my husband, just kind of did whatever, and I almost did that. But uh, I had some divine intervention. I won't go into that story. <laughs> yeah, but but I, I, you know, the, the struggles I have, I feel like the depth of what I went through gave me the depth of love that I have. So the deeper you go inside, and the more you clear, and the more you see, the greater the love you can have, because it's there. It's all inside of you. Yes. How, how do you know when it's your soulmate? That's an interesting question. She wants to know. How do I know it's my soulmate? I don't think there's one soulmate out there. I think that we're all soulmates. Everyone that brings you comes into your life is a soulmate. Um, I think there's people that you resonate with more. But I also think if you don't do your work, the person that you supposedly had a contract with to come in and all those ideas, uh, they may not, uh, they may miss you because you're not in alignment with them in this life. So I just, I don't know. I don't really like the word soulmate because I feel like. You guys are all my soulmates. What about true love? True love feels like when there isn't, when it doesn't hurt and it doesn't feel painful. A lot of people confuse them. I love this person so much and I'm in so much pain because they left. That's not love. Unconditional love means that you love them whether they stay or leave. And that's really uh, a, a big difference. But we all have these conditions that people need to be a certain way for us to love them back. And, uh, and the most important relationship is a relationship with yourself. And really, this book is about you having an unconditional love for yourself. Even when you screw up, and I can laugh at myself now or all my mistakes, and just love myself for all of me, not just oh, only the Debbie that does good, but the Debbie that gets pissed off because she gets a parking ticket. You know, just love her too. Because it's all part of us. You know, we're not just all, we're in this world and we have good and bad still every day. We can't clear out all the negative energy. I know people try, but when you live in this world, it's, it's around there all the time. Yes? How do you know when you're ready? How do you know when you're ready? I don't know, that's a hard question. I've been ready since I was 23. <laughs> <laughs> Since I was in the way, I was in six weddings in one year when I was 23. One of them was a gay cousin who got married to a woman. It's not doing anything for me. <laughs> so I, I think that's a question you have to ask yourself. And it's like, are you willing to be there 100% for someone? 
and is willing to open up 100% for someone. And you don't have to have that type of relationship. I mean, it's just better when it's that deep and interesting. You don't get bored. A lot of people get bored in relationships because they don't go that deep. They just stay on the surface. And that's why a lot of people date and date a million people and go from one person to the next person because they never really go deep and really really know themselves enough. Yes, Don. Uh, a couple things. First, for the third time, I want to apologize for ditching you in Aspen. He's following you. Yes. And you really have to, if you attracted someone that's not ready, you might ask yourself, maybe I'm not ready. <laughs> yes. Um, Only one question, sorry. <laughs> so let's say that someone was married from a time when they were very young like early 20s, and they were married for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we're talking about. Would, would you ever recommend that they spend time by themselves, like really yes. processing that before they got into another relationship? Like, do you think that's valuable? The question was, would you uh, recommend if you left it, been in a relationship for 20 years, or maybe it was like 30 years, right? How old were you then? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then should you date uh, instead of and uh, spend some time alone before you jump into another relationship? Um, I think it's different for everyone. One thing I don't put in my book is rules. You know, that whole book, I had a lot of people um, call me and they said they're in this rules study group, and I'm like, oh no. Because <laughs> I think your rules are going to be your rules. I mean, your guy, you could sleep with them on the first night, and it could be this great romance that lasts forever. This guy gave me a poem on my second date, and most my, um, and I shared it with some of my friends. They were saying, oh, I'd run away if someone did that. He must be needy. Everyone has their own rules. So <laughs> it's oh, like everyone. So if, that, if it feels not right for them, they can do what they want. <laughs> it may delay them really finding out. I think it's hard to really know yourself when you keep cushioning yourself with relationships. Some people do that. They like to have, you know, it's like the um, trapeze, grab to the next one and they don't have time to really be with themselves. But that could be a weekend going to you know, Idaho Springs and <laughs> hanging out. It just, it's different for everyone. <laughs>